So ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to write a novel and be a published author. That was, that has never not been my thing. Like, this has been talked about since I was eight. When I was that age, I begged my mother for a typewriter so I could start writing my novel. Uh, it's all I ever wanted in life. Um, and I got it. I worked for it. Um, fast forward to my, um, about age 35, that was the year that I left Austin to go to Ann Arbor, Michigan to, to attend the uh, MFA Creative Writer Program at the University of Michigan, which is a very prestigious program. It has a 1% acceptance rate. Um, you have to be pretty, not just talented, but lucky to get one of those seats. And I did. Um, wow. And that was a real like turning point in my life when finally, like after years of saying I wanted to be a writer and writing a lot of things that were maybe good, but not great or great, but not super great or complete garbage. Finally, <laughs> like somebody not only acknowledged that I had talent, but gave me this enormous opportunity to um, level up as it were uh, and have this credential that um, wouldn't guarantee success, but would get me pr like guaranteed like success adjacentness. <laughs> so, uh -huh, yeah. right. So I went to Michigan. Uh, I did the program. I had a great time. I learned a lot. Uh, and I finished Every Anxious Wave, which is my novel. Um, and it won a huge award, the Hopwood Award, which is a very prestigious award. And when you win the Hopwood Award, uh, people in New York find out about it. And then I started getting calls from agents. Oh, wow. Um, I, you know, people had, how did you get your agent? I was like, well, my agent got me. Like, I didn't, I don't have like a hard luck story there. Uh, we all got, uh, we all got scouted uh, at our program. And, you know, maybe that's not fair, but that's how <laughs> that works. So I got my agent and we worked on this novel. We rewrote it kind of together-ish for almost a year. And then she put it on the market and it sold very quickly. Um, to St. Martin's Press. Uh, and then I had an editor and we rewrote it and that was another year. Um, I went to New York and we had a fancy party. Uh, I, you know, it, it was very glamorous in my life. For yes, wow. 2015, 2016. Uh, and then February, 2016, it came out and it was reviewed pretty well. Um, not that anyone but me pays attention to such things is, is like, so, Yes, my novel came out and is successful. It's also not successful. This did not launch me into like the higher echelons of the literary world. I never got asked to speak at a university. Uh, you know, I never, it, it, my film rights, I, somebody does own the film rights, but I don't know that that's actually ever gonna get made. They do send me a check yeah. every year, that's great. Uh, but who knows? Um, and then, uh, I wrote a second novel and I finished it and my agent and I worked on it for a while. And to date, it has got around 50 rejections. That novel will probably never see the light of day unless wow. I publish it. Wow. Myself. What a difference. Yeah. Um, which that happened almost, that started almost two years ago. I had a two book deal with St. Martin's. They canceled the second book because they didn't like that manuscript. Um, it happens. It happened to me. And that put me in a really dark place for a while. Like, on top of other things going on in my life, that the fact that my, my gravy train and my dream were kind of like over. Um, for now, that's not to say that I won't write a third novel or another book that will be published or successful on some level. But to get all these rejections and some of them were really nice like I got called a genius in a couple of them like <laughs> no one has said that I wrote a bad book I wrote an unsaleable book what does that mean like publishing is a business like anything else it's not all about art it's not all about talent it's about business it's about money it's about predicting something that that they can't i mean published like editors are like basically like wandering in, in the dark not knowing what's going to take off what's not going to take off um 
And while this book has its, it, there was reasons why it was a risk to be taken at the time, you know, it's not, it's not as heavy and hardcore as the second book that I wrote, which is about surviving a, an abusive relationship. Mm. This one's just kind of about indie rock and feeling bad about yourself. <laughs> um, you know, to be rejected uh, for what I wrote about something really horrible that happened to me was kind of like, they kind of had intersections. Like, you know, it's nobody's fault. Everybody's just trying to make money and keep their job. Um, and no, I didn't write a bad book, <clears throat> but like, it still hurt. It still was a yeah. setback and it changed yeah. my process. Cause when I sat down to write, I would have it in my head that I have to write, I have to write to please my master. And I don't know who that master is. And anyone who's anyone is going to tell me, no, Mo, you write what you want. You write from your heart. You, you know, you can do this. You've done it before. You're really good at it. But I wasn't feeling it. And then I had to stop and step back and be like, like, can I continue to write without paying any mind to the external validation factor of it all? Like, mm. what, like, mm -hmm. will you still write knowing that you may never publish again? You may never have a book party again, you know? Like maybe you're one and done and maybe you just need to like move on and find something else to do and accept that like everything you write, maybe, you know, you'll do, <laughs> you'll do shows in Austin and that's, that's as good as it's going to be for you forever. And like, I really had to like sit with that and like, is that okay? I don't really have any control over how people receive my work and it doesn't serve me to beat myself up over like, I didn't write the thing that they wanted. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so that put me in a pretty dark place where I wasn't doing a lot of work. Where So, and then that made me feel even worse. And then I would get all these, like I would write essays that get rejected. I'd apply to residencies that get rejected. Like seriously, 2019, like everything I asked for was a no. It was, <sighs> like, it was my year of rejection. Um, and I was looking for a full-time job because like, I can't keep, I, I'm not making any money writing anymore. So uh, better go find work. But I couldn't, like I was unemployed for most of 2019. Um, and then I got my job here in Austin at University of Texas. So I turned it around. I have a, I have a full time job now. It's not it's not writing. It's writing adjacent. I work in the English department. Um, but it's not it's not the dream. It's not what I had in mind when I was dreaming about my life. <laughs> and that's okay. Or is it okay? I mean, let's do that. <laughs> I don't know. You tell right me. Right now, because the way the world is, I'm just lucky to have a job. Yeah, really. Yeah. So that, there's that perspective, but also like I have all my life put so much pressure on myself to be successful. And now maybe with this, I have the opportunity to redefine what success means to me. 